In my clinic, I see adults and older people with um, ME. So at the current time, we don't have a clinic that, where I see children. So it's difficult to know what the differences are between children and adults in terms of symptoms. My impression when looking after adults and older people is um, that there are very little differences between the presentation of ME in older people compared to younger people and the impact and the severity of the symptoms tends to be very similar. ME is an interesting illness because it can affect any age group. It always used to be thought that it was a disease of younger people, but it's becoming clear that it can affect all age groups, including older people. We've now looked at those people coming to our clinic and found that a significant proportion are presenting for the first time over the age of 50, up to 20% of patients coming to the clinic. So a quite significant number. It's not really fully understood whether or not the disease is the same disease in older people as it is in younger age groups. In our study where we matched older people to younger people who'd had the disease for the same length of time, which that was very important, so um, it got rid of the confounding issues of length of illness, we didn't find that patients had any significant difference in the symptoms they were experiencing. So the symptoms were as bad and had as greater impact in the old versus the young. But the real um, significant differences were when we tested the autonomic nervous system and found that there were more profound abnormalities in the older age group, which are perhaps the thing that put that individual at risk of developing this fatigue associated disease. Understanding why memory changes in patients with ME um, is very important and it may be that there is a relationship between what happens in people with ME and their cognitive function and what happens in the brain as we age. We've done studies here in Newcastle looking at um, dementia and age-related changes in the brain and been able to show that autonomic dysfunction associates with cognitive problems as we age and that the severity of the autonomic dysfunction predicts how your memory will change over time. So we're beginning to see very similar abnormalities in patients with ME which might suggest that people with ME have a kind of accelerated aging phenomena and that that is associated with the presence of abnormalities of the autonomic nervous system. It's a good question should there be different diagnostic criteria between the old and the young. I think that raises the question of whether or not the diagnostic criteria we have at the moment um, are fit for purpose. And I would argue that they probably aren't. They're based on symptoms experienced by patients rather than anything biological or physiological. And as a result, I suspect we put together into one diagnostic group lots of different diseases that makes it very difficult as a clinician understanding what are the right types of treatment for patients and as a researcher it makes it very difficult to be sure that the research we're doing is with groups that are the same, i.e. homogeneous. What tends to happen is that everybody who fits a symptomatic diagnostic criteria like the FACUDA um, gets put lumped together into a clinical trial and then we're surprised when the trial doesn't show benefit for patients. If we were to understand the different types of disease that are under this umbrella diagnosis of ME or CFS then that would allow us to begin to understand the pathophysiology of these diseases 
and direct more specific treatments. So for example, at the moment, we clearly understand that there are um, autonomic phenotypes. So there are patients with POTS, there are patients who drop their blood pressure or have neurally mediated hypotension. We know that there are different types of sleep phenotype, probably four different types. And we also are beginning to understand that there are at least two different muscle phenotypes. So all these different things are all lumped together into the one diagnostic category of ME or CFS. But really, if we're to understand um, these diseases more fully and get better treatments, rather than lump them together, we need to actually pull them apart and begin to do experiments with specific phenotypes rather than the whole diagnostic group of ME or CFS. There's still very little known about the natural history of ME and um, sometimes we see reports on the television or in magazines about people who have died very young with ME. Um, so we really do need better studies where we follow up patients with ME for long periods of time so that we can see whether or not they have an excess mortality by virtue of the fact they have ME. Interestingly, in the work we've done in patients with the fatigue-associated disease called primary biliary cirrhosis, which is an autoimmune liver disease, in those patients we've been able to show that those who were fatigued um, over a decade ago were significantly more likely to die compared to those who were non-fatigued. So that suggests that fatigue is something that is associated with an excess mortality and that fatigued patients certainly with PBC are likely to live shorter lives than those who are non-fatigued. Fatigue is a strange symptom and it means different things to different people. When I'm in clinic I'll always ask people what does fatigue mean to you? Some people will describe it as a sensation of um, sleepiness or excess sleepiness, particularly during the day. Some people it's brain fog. Some people it's muscle um, malaise or um, aches and pains. Interestingly, in the studies that we've done looking at blood pressure regulation, where we've done tilt table testing in people with um, ME and fatigue associated diseases, we'll set out to drop people's blood pressure using a tilt table and when we do that we always routinely ask patients what symptoms are you experiencing at the time that their blood pressure is low. What's interesting to me is that often we'll say to people what are you feeling at the moment and they will say these are my symptoms this is exactly what I feel and we'll see that this is something that they're experiencing in association with a low blood pressure. So people have a perception that this is their symptom, their fatigue, their disease, their ME, but in fact what we're seeing is um, that the, their symptom is associated with a low blood pressure. And that patients will come and see us who've dropped their blood pressure and to them it's, it's my blood pressure. They don't recognize the fact that this might be something that could be diagnosed as ME or CFS. So their perception or interpretation of the symptom they're experiencing is that it's ME, whereas people who come and see us in the clinic with blackouts or dizzy spells will realize that it's um, related to the blood pressure dropping and their blackout symptom. So I do think we need to understand more fully from patients what fatigue is to them, what does it mean to them? Because at the moment it's a very nebulous description of a whole cluster of different experiences by different people. Heeft u een vraag naar aanleiding van deze video? Reageer op YouTube of tweet naar het MECVS Vereniging of mail naar wvp.me-cvsvereniging.nl.
Uw vragen worden zoveel mogelijk behandeld in de chatsessies.